Hello everyone, welcome to our comments and questions TJ channel, I hope you're all doing well. In this video, we'll be analyzing and answering the questions from this week's Watchtower study. This week's study covers April 8th to April 14th and is titled, I Will Never Abandon You. Without further ado, let's begin. Let's look at question number one. When will all the anointed ones be in heaven? All the anointed ones remaining on earth will be taken to heaven before Armageddon breaks out. Now, on to question number two. What question might arise? And what will we discuss in this article? A question that might arise is, what will happen to the other sheep of Christ who are serving Jehovah on earth during the Great Tribulation? This article will discuss how the other sheep will be cared for and protected by Jehovah even when the anointed ones are no longer on earth to guide them. Moving on to the first subheading, what will not happen? Let's see questions number three and four. What might some wonder, and why? Some might wonder if the other sheep will stray from the truth when the members of the governing body are no longer on earth to guide them. This could be due to historical accounts such as that of the high priest Jehoiada and King Jehosh, as well as apostasy in the second century Christian congregation. Let's see question number five. What conclusions should we not draw from these two accounts? We should not conclude that Christ's other sheep will follow the same path as Jehosh or the Christians of the second century, falling into apostasy when the anointed ones are no longer on earth to guide them. Instead, we should trust that the other sheep will continue to faithfully serve Jehovah and be well cared for. Now, on to the first subheading, Pure Worship Will Not Be Tainted. Let's see question number six. What three periods of time are we going to analyze? We will analyze three periods of time, one, the time of ancient Israel, two, the period after the death of the apostles, and three, the times of the restoration of all things, that is, our days. Let's see question number 7. Why shouldn't faithful Israelites be discouraged when the nation of Israel and its kings did evil things? Faithful Israelites should not be discouraged when the nation of Israel and its kings did evil things because, despite the disobedience of many, Jehovah always fulfilled His promises and punished the disobedient. This encouraged faithful Israelites to trust that Jehovah would protect and guide them, as mentioned in Isaiah 55 verses 10 and 11. Let's see question number 8. Why shouldn't it surprise us that the second century Christian congregation became corrupt? It shouldn't surprise us that the second century Christian congregation became corrupt because Jesus had predicted a great apostasy, and the apostles confirmed that this apostasy had already begun. History shows that apostasy spread rapidly after the death of the apostles, fulfilling what had been predicted in the scriptures. Let's see question number 9. How does our era differ from the two we've seen in the previous paragraphs? Our era differs from previous eras, such as ancient Israel in the second century, in that we live in the times of the restoration of all things. This period began in 1914 and is characterized by a time when pure worship is being restored and is expected to culminate in perfection and the earth becoming a paradise under the messianic kingdom. 
This restoration includes Jesus' reign in heaven and the presence of a ruler representing Jehovah, among other aspects mentioned in the scriptures. Let's see question number 10, part A. What does the Bible predict about pure worship in our day? The prophecy of Isaiah 54 verse 17 predicts that in our day pure worship will not be contaminated and that no weapon made against it will succeed. This prophecy shows divine protection over pure worship in difficult times, ensuring that it will remain intact and unaffected by adversities. Let's see question number 10, part B. Why are we encouraged by what is predicted in Isaiah? The prophecy of Isaiah 54 verse 17 encourages us because it shows us the promise of divine protection over pure worship in our day, giving us the assurance that, despite difficulties and challenges that may arise, true worship will remain unshaken and will not be contaminated. This promise gives us confidence and hope in God's faithfulness to preserve His pure worship and sustain His people throughout history. Moving on to the second subheading, What Will Happen? Let's see question number 11. Why are we confident that the great crowd will not be abandoned when all the anointed ones are in heaven? We are confident that the great crowd will not be abandoned when all the anointed ones are in heaven because Jehovah will care for his people, just as he did in the past after the deaths of Moses and Elijah. Let's see question number 12, part A. How did Jehovah care for his people after Moses' death? After Moses' death, Jehovah continued to care for his people Israel, as there was Joshua, whom Moses had trained, and there were also many experienced men leading the nation. Let's see question number 12, part B. How did he do so after Elijah went to serve elsewhere? See also the illustration. After Elijah went to serve elsewhere, Jehovah continued to care for his people through Elisha, whom Elijah had been training for years to take his place. This leadership transition shows how God continually provides leaders and guidance for his people, ensuring that they are not left helpless. Additionally, it is mentioned that the sons of the prophets were also present suggesting that there was an organized structure to continue the teaching and spiritual leadership of God's people. Let's see question number 13. What does Hebrews 13,5b assure us of? Hebrews 13,5b assures us that Jehovah will never leave us or abandon us. This promise provides us with comfort and security amidst any circumstance, reminding us that God is always present and cares for his faithful servants, just as he did with Moses, Elijah, and other leaders in the past. Jehovah continues to provide guidance and protection to his people, ensuring that they are never alone or forsaken. Let's see question number 14. What important conclusion do we reach? The important conclusion we reach is that, according to the study article, when the anointed ones are taken to heaven at the end of the great tribulation, God's people will continue to worship him faithfully here on earth, with Jesus Christ as their leader. God's servants will not retreat, despite the challenges they face. Even though hostile nations like Gog of Magog may arise, God's people will be rescued and remain steadfast in their worship. The promise of divine protection and the training of prepared leaders guarantee that pure worship will not be tainted and that God's people will be preserved in faithfulness. Let's see questions number 15 and 16. 
According to Revelation 17 verse 14, what will the anointed Christians do during the Battle of Armageddon, and why does knowing that encourage us? According to Revelation 17 verse 14, the anointed Christians will participate in the Battle of Armageddon alongside the Lamb, Jesus Christ, and will be among those who accompany him in victory over the political elements of the world. This perspective is encouraging because it demonstrates that the Anointed Ones will have an active and significant role in the culmination of divine purposes, contributing to the defeat of God's enemies and the establishment of His Kingdom on Earth. The participation of the Anointed Christians in this final battle highlights their importance in God's plan and their role as collaborators in fulfilling His will. Let's see question number 17. How do we know that all of God's servants will be safe during the War of Armageddon? We know that all of God's servants will be safe during the War of Armageddon because trusting in Jehovah and following His instructions is the key to divine protection. Isaiah 26 verse 20 advises us, Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you, hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. This instruction assures us that, by following God's guidance and trusting in his protection, all of God's servants, both in heaven and on earth, will be safeguarded during that time of testing. Now we will answer the review questions entitled, What Would You Answer? Question 1. What will not happen when all the Anointed Ones are already in Heaven? When all the Anointed Ones are in Heaven, according to the study article, we should not fear being abandoned. The promise of Hebrews 13,5b assures us that Jehovah will never leave us or forsake us, meaning that God's servants remaining on earth will not be abandoned or left without help. This divine promise gives us comfort and security, reminding us that God is always present and cares for His faithful servants, even in challenging circumstances. Question 2. Why are we confident that pure worship will not be contaminated? We are confident that pure worship will not be contaminated because the Bible assures us that no weapon made against us will succeed. Additionally, we are told that pure worship has been restored and will not be contaminated again. This divine promise gives us certainty that the biblical education work carried out by Jehovah's people will continue unhindered, despite attempts of opposition. Trust in God's protection and support assures us that pure worship will remain intact and that no earthly power can corrupt it. Question 3. Why do we know that Jehovah will care for His people? We know that Jehovah will care for His people because the Bible assures us that God will never leave us or forsake us. This promise of divine protection and care gives us the assurance that even amidst challenges and adversities, God will be with us, watching over our well-being and safety. Jehovah's unwavering faithfulness and love toward His people guarantee that we will always be under His care and protection, strengthening us to face any situation with confidence and hope in His saving power. Well, these have been the answers, from this week's Watchtower study, I hope these have been very helpful for you my dear brothers and sisters. We will be seeing each other next week, with a new video, I send you a warm embrace, and may Jehovah bless and protect you always. <laughs>